Hello, everybody. It is so good to be back here again today. I have some very powerful content to share with you. In fact, I have nine specific questions to share with you to help you evaluate if you're actually making progress towards your goals, because sometimes it doesn't feel like it and we actually are making progress towards our goals, or these questions will help you evaluate if you're just spinning your wheels because sometimes it feels like we're spinning our wheels and that's what's actually happening. We are spinning our wheels, which is very frustrating when you feel like you are downloading all the freebies and you're trying to figure this stuff out on your own and you're watching all the YouTube videos. It's really exhausting. There's a lot to do. There are many hats to wear when you're an entrepreneur, when you're just getting started in business. And so it can feel very overwhelming. And these questions will help you discover if you're staying on track. Okay. Let's jump right into it. Here's question number one. Are you guys ready? Hello, Lisa. So good to have you with us today. Um, number one is, do you have a vision for your business that motivates you to do the hard work of showing up, right? There are days when we wake up and we're like, man, I do not want to rise and grind. I do not want to get up and do the hard work of showing up. Sometimes I don't even want to brush my hair. I kind of didn't today right? Um, and that's okay. But do I have a vision for where I want to be in three months, six months, one year, five years that will push me to do the hard work of getting my butt out of bed early and getting stuff done? If you don't have a very clear vision, you need to start there. Why are you even doing this business in the first place? If you don't know where you're going, you can't measure your progress in tracking how to get there. Okay. It sounds very simple, but a lot of people are like, well, I'm, tr they're doing all this work. They're spinning all their wheels and they're hustling, 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 and they're exhausted and they don't even know what they're driving towards. It sounds crazy, but it happens because we just get so in the details. We get so in the thick of it that we can't even see the forest for the trees. So back up. Do you still have a vision or maybe you had a vision. You don't believe it anymore. And that's okay. You just need to evaluate it, acknowledge it, and pivot. But make sure you have a vision that is still motivating you to get up and do the hard work. Number two, number two. Hello, Sarah. Thank you for joining me today. Tell me how you guys are doing. How are you guys feeling? It is February. We're almost through the first quarter, the first quarter of this year. Um, number two, is your strategy for your business, is it still simple? And getting those clients and building your visibility and growing your list, is your strategy simple? Because guys, this is not rocket science. What it requires is consistency and persistence. And a lot of people drop out of the race because they're just not consistent in what they're doing. So keep your strategy simple. Don't overcomplicate it. It is very easy to, especially when we're struggling with shiny object syndrome, to want to try to do what this person's doing over here and to do what this person's doing over there in that industry and try to incorporate this little thing here. Keep it super simple and be very consistent with what you're doing. Keep showing up. Number three, are you actively showing up? It's very easy for us to, uh, especially in the online space, to kind of dig into the back end and systems and automations and I'm working on my next piece of content or my next offer, but we're not staying visible. We're not staying active in it or we're like, you know what? I'm just not feeling it this week. So I'm just not going to show up for work. I'm just not going to do this thing for my online business. Um, maybe you're still working nine to five and you're really tired and you're like, man, I just, I just need a break from my business. No, this is, if this is going to be your job, you need to treat it like your job and show up for it. Like it's your job. And you can have a dream job and work from home, or you can even work from Bali. You can be a nomad and uh, a digital entrepreneur who's traveling the world, right? But you have to still show up. Hello. Thank you for joining me, Saud. Um, I'm so glad to have you here. So make sure that you treat this like a job and not like a hobby, because if you treat it like a hobby, it's going to be profitable like a hobby, which most hobbies, they suck our money and they don't make us money. Um, so number four, do you still love your ideal clients? So your ideal clients are people who are like, you would absolutely drool over getting to work with them. Like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I get to work with this person who's getting to do this thing or their dream is to do this thing. Like, I want to get behind that. I would love to help them do that or this particular event, right? 
There are clients that we dream of working with. Do you still love them? If you realize like, hmm, that doesn't excite me anymore, or just kind of like, oh, a client, you need to reevaluate, right? Like it's, you need to say, who is my ideal client? Um, and if you don't know how to figure out who your ideal client is, I have a free workbook, I'll link to that, but make sure you know who your ideal client is and discover and reevaluate. Do you still love working with them? For example, if you're in the fitness industry, right? Or maybe the photography industry and you used to shoot weddings, and you're like, mm, brides just aren't my game anymore. I really love maternity and newborn stuff. I love the intimacy of that. I love the sacredness of that or the specialness of that, that very short window of time. Um, you know, that's a pivot. That's a different clientele completely. Same with fitness. Maybe you're moving away from classes and aerobics or maybe yoga and Pilates and moving more into weightlifting or um, something that's more specific, even body specific. So figure out, you might still love fitness, but you may not love working with a certain type of client. And that's important to differentiate. Number five, and this is for if you do have clients already, when you're working with them and if you're talking to them, are you still enjoying every moment? And when I say every moment, I kind of mean every moment. Like there are hard parts of conversations and sometimes you might disagree with clients or they disagree with you, but that if that's part of your process, which as a designer, a brand person, there's sometimes pushback of like, well, I don't know how I feel about this or I don't know how this looks or, you know, I don't know if this fits right. What do you think? I don't think so. Like if that dialogue is not feeling good or that process isn't feeling good to you anymore and you're not enjoying the process with your clients, even though like not all of it is pretty, hopefully you understand what I'm saying. Um, but if, if you're not feeling it anymore, you need to reevaluate that because if, if everything you're doing is pushing you towards being in that place, in that process with those clients, then you need to step back and say like, hey, I'm, I'm kind of spinning my wheels and making progress towards something I don't want to make progress towards. I'm building a life that I'm not wanting to live. Um, so maybe it's not clients, maybe it's course stuff. Maybe it's, you don't enjoy teaching this live workshop this way anymore. Um, maybe you don't enjoy doing these types of events. It doesn't have to just be clients, but I think you guys get the picture of what I'm talking about. Let me know if you're picking up what I'm putting down, because this is important. These are really important questions that we need to pause and ask ourselves to make sure we're actually making progress towards our end goal, which might be leaving our nine to five, which might be traveling while working online, right? If it's not pushing us towards our goal, it's pulling us from it. So we need to be aware of those things. Hello, Bonnie. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you doing today? Um, okay. Number six, where were we? Oh yes. Number six, look back on the last 90 days and see if you can see any progress. Can you see any progress looking back over your last quarter? I just started using 90 day journals. I use in particular the full focus planner by Michael Hyatt. Um, I really loved it. And what I also love is that I start to run out of pages and it forces me to reflect on what I've done. What have I done? It also asks some really great questions, helps me stay focused throughout the day. Um, but the point is, can I track my progress? And if I can't, I need to pause my, myself and say, why? Why can't I track progress? Did I not set trackable goals? So for example, if I want to get a new client or sell another course, then I need to get in front of X number of people. Well, how many times a week do I need to get visible in order to get in front of X number of people? Four or five times a week. Okay, maybe I only got visible two times a week. Um, and that translated into low site traffic or low group engagement activity, depending on where your people are at. Maybe your Instagram um, account was very quiet and you didn't get as many likes or comments or in interaction there. Um, and then that's going to translate into sales, right? So there are trackable things, which in and of themselves, numbers are just numbers. But if you look at them the right way and you approach them the right way, they become very powerful indicators of your progress. So if you're wanting to grow your list by a thousand people, but you've only written two blog posts this quarter, you you might not get the list growth that you want from your blog. And so you might have to say, I need to write 10 blog posts 
and I'm going to get super visible with them in 10 different Facebook groups or 10 different um, Instagram partners or besties, you know, partnering with people are going to get live on 10 different podcasts or 10 different Pinterest tribes, whatever you're doing. Um, and then you can say, well, I only got 500 people from that, but I can track my progress and growth towards my number of growing my list by a thousand people. So can you look back? Can you see progress? Maybe it was just, I, I want to get on the phone with two people this quarter. And that was your progress. And you got on the phone with one. Okay. But just make sure that you can track it and set good, reasonable goals for yourself that you can push yourself with, but also attain. Okay, number seven. This is, I think, super key to tracking whether or not we're being successful and making progress towards our goals. Are you expressing appreciation and gratitude for where you're at right now? That it is so easy to become dissatisfied and very dependent on results and numbers in your business and to incorporate that into a part of our identity of I'm a failure, I'm not successful, um, I can't do this. But when we express appreciation and gratitude and when we're also very in tune to the pulse of our business because we're tracking what we're doing and what's working, then we're able to say like, you know what? I had a really bad day. I had family stuff going on. I had a medical emergency. The dog got sick, whatever. But you know what? I did my Facebook Live. And that's one step in the right direction towards hitting my goals, right? And so maybe it's, you know what? I was able to be available for that medical emergency and I was able to leave my business where it was and it was fine. Nothing collapsed. And I just pick it back up tomorrow expressing appreciation for where we're at in the process and the journey towards those big goals is really key because when we start functioning from a place of scarcity and from a place of lack, man, that comes through, that comes through in ways you can't even define it. You can't, it's not tangible. Yes. Write in your gratitude journal every morning, part of your five-step morning routine. Perfect, Bonnie. I love that. And yes, you have to measure the progress. And welcome, Tiffany. I'm so glad that you've joined. I know Tiffany is definitely leaning in and pushing into her business, and she's going to make 2019 happen. I just know it. So, so make sure that you're expressing gratitude and appreciation for the little things, for the small wins along the way. And that's also going to keep you hopeful, right? That not, it's very easy to, to slip into, I can't do this mindset, but the truth is you can do this. And there's evidences that you can do this because you did grow your group by 10 people this week or five people this week or one person this week. There was growth. There's motion in the right direction and any motion in the right direction is great motion. So last question, not last question. I have another question. Are you following a proven approach to whatever it is that you're trying to achieve? So really, this is just a, um, a point in not reinventing the wheel. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. What I do is I help people put a personal brand and spin on that wheel. I don't believe in cookie cutter businesses. I do believe in doing things that are based on our strengths and having strengths-based brands. That is my big thing. But you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are proven models and concepts, philosophies, principles, frameworks, what do you want to call them for businesses to succeed? And you don't have to figure those out from scratch. Um, it's helpful to understand them from the ground up, but you don't have to invent them or reinvent them. You can do something that works, that makes sense and build it on your strengths. Um, so need, you need to make sure that you're really just not overcomplicating something and not trying to reinvent the wheel. This is a great place to pause and say like, am I, am I complicating this? Like I'm trying to build a 52 step funnel with all these different automations and things, which I've talked to somebody who has done that. And I was like, holy cow, like that is wild. Um, but really a lot of people, they just need a two-step funnel to get started, right? An opt-in and a thank you page and delivery of the freebie or something like that. Or maybe it's a webinar. They opt in for the webinar, they deliver the webinar, and there's a follow-up email sequence, a three-step funnel. Okay. So it doesn't have to be rocket science. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated. Doing webinars, doing freebies, doing live challenges and workshops and things like that. Those are proven models and principles in building a business and, and selling your offers and your services. So 
Just do what is effective, but make it feel fresh by making sure you're clear on who you are, what your strengths are, and putting your personal brand spin on it. And then lastly, this is my last question. Are you making time for fun and taking care of yourself? And this one is something I'm very passionate about, especially when I'm working with my clients, because this is something that I slipped into when I didn't have any mentorship and I didn't have any community around me and I didn't know what I didn't know. And I was coming from a place of urgency and feeling like, oh, I've just got to get this done. I got to get money coming in. And again, some of that urgency came through and I didn't even realize it. And I was like pushing people away instead of like pulling them towards me being like, cause I could help them, but I was pushing them away because of my urgency to feel like I got to get this done. I got to get, the, get it done the right way. The first time all this pressure put on myself, make sure that this is still fun. Like, you should do this because it's fun, because you enjoy doing it, because it's based on your strengths, because you can help people, because you love helping people. And also you take care of yourself. There's time for fun. There is time to breathe. There is time to do your mindset work. And if you are just joining me for the first time, I do my mindset stuff in the morning, every morning. I've got my mindset beliefs up on my wall behind me. And this is essential because if you burn yourself out, you aren't going to make progress towards your goals. Does that make sense? I hope it does because it's very important. Um, burning, burning yourself out constantly, like every quarter and you're like, okay, progress, 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 progress. And I burned out and I'm taking three weeks off and I'm losing momentum. I'm losing consistency. I'm losing authority and expertise with my people who are watching me and following me because I'm inconsistent and they don't know when I'm going to burn out again because I'm trying to do it all myself or I'm trying to do all the things. Keep it really simple especially in the beginning, you can absolutely scale down the road. And I am pro scaling. I am pro systems. I'm pro automations, but make sure that there is some level of balance. And that doesn't mean that you don't work hard. That doesn't mean that you don't work long days, but maybe it looks like, cause personally, I'm of the belief that you can work for two weeks and then take off a long weekend and then go back at it for two long full weeks and then take off a three-day weekend, right? Just make sure you're taking time for fun and building in restorative activities into your life, into your day, um, whatever that needs to look like for you. Maybe the frequency of it is more often than for others. Maybe it's less often and that's okay. Make sure though that it's right for you. And if you want, let me know if you want me to send out these questions because they're really, really helpful. They're really helpful in helping us to pause every quarter. I like to do it now more frequently with my 90 day journal. We're halfway through the first quarter. And this is a great time to kind of say like, mm, am I still on track? Am I still moving in the right direction? Um, but at a minimum, every quarter, make sure you're having some kind of review and asking yourself some really sharp, pointed, direct questions. Okay, guys, I hope that you find this very helpful, very powerful. I know I do. Um, and after having started asking myself some of these more pointed, direct questions, it's like, ouch, I don't think I'm very clear on my vision. Ouch, I haven't been showing up the way I should be. Ouch, I haven't been taking care of myself and I am burning out and wanting to quit. Um, and I don't want that for you. I want you guys to learn from my mistakes and go further. Guys, somebody's ceiling needs to be your platform. And so I wanna see you guys go further faster because I know you guys have beautiful visions, beautiful missions on your heart, beautiful messages that the world needs to hear. All right. That's it for today. If you have any thoughts or comments or questions, please feel free to drop them um, in here and I'll be sure to, to read them and respond to them a, a bit later. But you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope that it is powerful and productive and I'll see you guys here next time. Bye guys.